pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. items we have the approval of the minutes from the June 17th regular meeting the June 17th executive session the July 9th regular meeting and the July 9th study session are there any additions corrections issues questions from any board member Anyone in the public have any questions, comments, additions to the minutes? Okay, barring none, I'll entertain the motion. I move we accept the consent items as presented. Right. Moved by Jenny. Second. Second by Mark. <coughs> any other questions? All in favor, please raise your right hand. Okay. Motion approved, 6-0. And we'll move on to the financial report. Shana, do you want to walk us through the funds reports? Sure, please. Yeah. Uh, for the education fund, we have monthly receipts of $1,036,444.15. Our year-to-date receipts are $6,330,683.52. Our month-to-date expenses are $930,965.82, and we did do another $300,000 transfer from education to operating in the month of June. Our appropriation balance is $6,155,050.45, uh, so our net appropriations are sitting right at 49.98%. Our year-to-date expenditures are $6,159,111.55, leaving our cash balance at $633,625.62. And, uh, in the debt service fund, uh, that one for the month of June, we did receive our property tax distribution, so our receipts are $1,995,110 dollars and 83 cents our year-to-date receipts so far are two million forty one thousand five thirty eight and thirty five cents our month-to-date expenses because we also had a uh, our loan payments our bond payments were made in June effective for July 1st of one million six hundred ninety two thousand four hundred eighty seven dollars and seventy five cents our appropriation balance is one million five hundred thirty nine thousand one hundred ninety five dollars and twenty five cents with a net appropriation of forty seven point four eight percent so we're writing at that fifty percent our year-to-date total expenses out of our debt service is one million seven hundred two thousand six hundred eighty seven dollars and seventy five cents leaving our cash balance of one million eight hundred three thousand nine hundred twenty nine dollars and five cents and Finally, our operations fund, um, again, because we did receive our June settlement, we have receipts of $1,943,564.81. Our monthly transfer in from education was $300,000. Our year-to-date receipts are $2,849,466.38. Month-to-date expenses were $411,170. And our appropriations are $2,902,650.10. Uh, net appropriation balance is 56.94%. Our year-to-date expenditures are $2,194,910.90, leaving a cash balance of $989,152.17. And thank you. You're welcome. Any questions from board members? about the financial report, the funds report, sorry. <coughs> Any questions from the audience? Um, 
everybody okay with just doing the claims and payroll with us? Okay. Sure. Uh, claims total three million two hundred twenty-seven thousand eight hundred forty-six dollars and ninety-two cents. Any questions on the claims as they were sent out and posted on the website? And the payrolls totaling eight hundred thousand eight hundred six thousand four hundred fifty-nine dollars and eighty-two cents. Any questions on the payrolls submitted to be approved? Any questions from the public on either the claims or the payrolls? Okay. Barring none, I'll accept a motion to approve the funds report, the claims, and the payroll. So moved. Moved by Ethan. Second. Second by Mark. Barring any other comments or thoughts? Please raise your right hand. Any dissenting? Great. Motion approved. Six zero. Action items. We have the approval of building level handbooks that include the changes for the 2024-2025 year. I want to begin by thanking the board for their support. I know we spoke about this. Um, the school is still in session, a, a study session, and we're waiting on some information around the attendance policy that legislators have passed and the. Uh, communication devices that the legislators have passed and then working with the team and working with Lauren, I think that we've brought um, the comprehensive handbooks to you. Um, I understand there are still a couple of typos that I can work with the groups or changes that need to happen. Um, the one thing most notable in all of this would be the change to before school and after school care in regards to adding a dollar uh, fee to each of those, which is outlined in the handbook. I don't know if there are other specific questions or concerns. Mark, I appreciate you shared some some things that we still need to change and I'll work with the yeah. team to make sure. Are we speaking directly to anything AI? I know I sent out the <clears throat> podcast to you, I just sent out to the rest of the board, but not necessarily only that, but um, with regards to uh, work, what have you, I think we can talk about, I think high school talks about plagiarism, but I don't know where AI fits within that. I don't know if that's considered plagiarism, but I guess you're, you're plagiarizing a computer. <laughs> you use it we did add something about AI tools in there um, to kind of assist with that. So when we are dealing with AI a lot, it's don't try and stop it accept it, teach them how to use it appropriately, that kind of angle is what we in the education realm, whether I'm with, you know, sitting principals, sitting superintendents, sitting assistant principals, curriculum directors, that's the big push is either understand AI is here to stay and it's going to be the reality for these kids and try and educate them on how to best utilize that in a positive manner versus trying to block them from using it. Um, so that's kind of what we're working on, but it's very new to, you know. Yeah. Uh, but it's very obvious when they use it. <laughs> like in an English class. Or wow, something like overnight. That. Yeah. Where did this, where'd your so, vocabulary come from? <laughs> it's a double-edged sword for sure. For what sure. great sentence structure. You can't read it out loud. And you're going to tell the words they wrote in the paper. Dang. When you say you've got AI tools that you'll be using to kind of counter some of that plagiarism. There is some of that that you can utilize. Um, really our best tools are English teachers because they recognize the kids writing like that. But, yeah. um, well, but some of the math lessons you use with AI, I mean AI is a problem across all realms. So <laughs> it's easy to focus on English, but it's an issue for other subject areas as well as we learn and grow in it. I've noted, a lot. <laughs> I've noted a lot of, uh, of recent applications uh, of AI being used towards complicated math stuff that I've seen some yeah. people making sure AI can do it and it can, and so now that's a little bit too. And more the unexpected side, because you've already got calculators and stuff, but apparently AI math is also a big thing now. Mm -hmm. Of course it is. Yeah. Why wouldn't it be? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> any other questions or on any of the handbooks? Anyone in the public have a comment? Question? All right, barring none, I'll accept a motion to approve the handbooks as provided to us. So moved. <laughs> Give it to Mark. That's okay. Oh, no. I, I'm Mark for the win. All night long. Jenny's second. All right. Dang. Any other questions or comments? All in favor? Raise your right hand. Six zero. All right. Next, we have the approval of the contract for the SLP services through Huddle for the 2024 um, school year. So I want to begin, before I turn it over to Lucas, I want to begin by thanking him for his hard work and diligence. I know he's reached out to several. Um, he has a plan for next year, Lucas, if you don't mind sharing that out just a bit and where you landed on this. But I do want to thank you publicly for your work. I know we've had several conversations and you've provided supporting documentation in regards to emails and phone calls made. So I do appreciate your work on that. Yeah, unfortunately, um, it's like anything with PT, OT, and speech. Um, when fewer people out of the universities are graduating with that, and then the private sector is snatching them up, this is what we have to go to. Um, good contact at IUSB for next spring. Keeping ear to the ground, get back a hold of her to see who she may have um, graduating to help us out to get back to in-person speech. So we have two in-person SLPs and this would be used more so, can you explain how you will use this program with this event? Yeah. Um, the lady who does it is Asia and um, just doing ACRs at the middle school last year, very nice. Um, use, you know, <coughs> use very, her caseload is a lot smaller than the in-person ones. Um, just virtually and, you know, trying to work on the, the kiddos and speech and, and stuff like that. But um, she's very easy to work with, very nice lady. Any questions from the board members about the SLP contract? I just want to thank you, Lucas, as well, for planning as much as possible for the upcoming years. Obviously, if there's no in-person people available, you can't create that out of thin air, but in these kinds of specialized positions, then you gotta go out and recruit. And the fact that you're looking at that, I really appreciate that, as there is just, there's a marked difference between a virtual and an in-person SLP. So we appreciate that you wanna do what's best for our students. Thank you, John. Any other comments? Comments from the public? Barring no, I'll accept a motion uh, to approve the SLP contract. Annie? <laughs> okay. Uh -oh, uh, move. <laughs> you got your phone for what? Steven for the second. <laughs> All in favor? Motion passes 6 0. All right, next we have the approval of items to declare surplus from the food service department. I'm assuming this is not when they cleaned out the refrigerator. The team has been doing a great job, as you'll see, with Wendy and her department and Scott and his, and then the principals are working with our maintenance crew in regards to a very comprehensive list that we anticipate bringing to you at the next board meeting, trying to clear out some items, um, some of it to take in for scrap. Others may have some resale value. So, Wendy, if you don't mind sharing what's on your list and, and what's happening with those items. So we have a couple, um, they're called pass-through little individual coolers, <coughs> the three doors. One came from Rural, one came from uh, Columbia, they have been in inactive or if not in use at least since before 2021. Um, I had Doug come out and look and see if there was anything they could do with some of that equipment to see if it was functional. 
um, when their staff couldn't take care of it, we did reach out and have like either Benchmark or JK come and look at it and everything that's listed on that list is non-repairable. Columbia uses our steam kettle to make soups and to boil water in a bigger batch. So we were gonna try to move middles over there, but we ended up not being able to repair any of that also. And there's an outdated milk cooler that I believe, I don't know if anybody remembers Caroline Keel, but she won it in a contest when she was here is also on that list that was um, uh, recycled in that also. Questions? Comments? Do you, do you already have units on order to replace them? Or? We've either already replaced it. Most of that has just been setting there. The only one that just recently went out was the kettle steamer at Columbia, and they have a steam, steamer microwave, and they also have a tilting skillet that for now will take care of that. But other than that, all the equipment has been replaced. We, we got a uh, partial grant for some of the milk coolers that we replaced that were coming off that list. Super nice. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? I think the picture's in there too. I know. Yeah, right now. Um, uh, from the public? Okay. Barring none, I'll accept a motion for. So moved. <laughs> Steven. Second? Second. Even. Second. Yep. Even. <laughs> All right. All in favor? Motion passes 6 0. We now have the approval of items to declare surplus from the technology department. Scott, would you like to go through and share that? Yeah, um, on this list are items that have, have died or any kind of problems we've had that throughout the year that we just store until the summer and then we put them on this surplus and get rid of them all at once. We have a company come in and just take all of it. And, uh, but most of the stuff is not repairable. Um, pretty much everything on this list. Everything that we can use, we try to put back in our stock and everything. But everything on this list, everything is uh, broken somehow. We're just ready to go. Okay. Any questions about the surplus items from technology? Questions from the public? Okay. Any questions? I'll take a motion. So moved. Stephen? Second. Stephen? All, right. All in favor? Motion passes 6 0. And now we have the approval of the revised cross country field trip on July 29th, 2024. So you, would share out a little bit. you guys recruited, I believe, last month or the month before for this, but uh, Coach Gudeman had some younger kids. We had listed 9 through 12 to go. Uh, a couple 7th and 8th graders want to go, and uh, middle school coaches are also going to be attending the trip. So they've asked that we amend it for 7 through 12 instead of 9 through 12 for the same date, same place, same game plan of go sleep in a tent, get up and run. All day, so on saying. All right. <laughs> God bless. Have fun. Yes. Yeah. I think there's just a couple of kids, and one of them is a coach. Yeah. 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 What was that? Can I see? I'm sorry. There's only a couple wanting to go. One of them's a coach's kid. The other's his kids. Well, for me, is that their idea of camp? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or your <laughs> idea? <laughs> I don't see Mr. Burnett's name right here. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 Any questions about the amended cross country field trip plan? Public? Okay, I will accept the motion. I move we accept the amended cross country field trip. Move by Jim. Second by Mark. <laughs> no other questions or comments? Everyone in favor? Raise your right hand. 
Motion passes, 6-0. And next we have the approval of policies, which are all conveniently listed on the agenda and on the website. Does anyone have any questions or comments or thoughts about the 20 or so policy recommendations that Neola sent us? <laughs> I mean, if any one of the board members would like to go ahead and read through that list, feel free to do that out loud. But. That's all right. I was told I don't have to do that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> well, I can do it, but our attorney said I don't have to do it. It is well, fully right. published online on the agenda behind me. Lauren was like, please stop. <laughs> <laughs> any questions from the public on any of these policy changes? Good job, Lauren. This, be... <laughs> this is the final reading? Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is the final reading. Once we do the vote, these will be passed on to Neola to be changed on the website. So, okay. I will accept a motion for approval of all of the listed policies. So moved. Moved by Jenny. Second. Second by Ethan. Last chance for comments. All right. All in favor, raise your right hand. Motion passes 6 0. All right, and then we have a first reading of policies PO 5136 and PO 5200. So I want to thank uh, Ms. Adley for her help and support in writing these and listening to and understanding each of the administrators' concerns and wanting to make sure that we incorporate those things we talked about at the study session, what we use for the personal communication devices at the high school is going to look much differently than what that looks like at the at the elementary. So just wanted to make sure that um, I thanked her as well. And I know the team has spent a great deal of time both with me and then communicating amongst themselves so that we can make sure that we are all on the same page. So thank you. Any questions about these two policies? This is the first reading, so we'll have a chance to digest it if you needed to a little bit more and have two more readings. Anyone in the public have any questions about these policies? Okay. I'll accept a motion. For, do we need a motion? No, I don't. Okay, it's just the first reading. Okay. Moving on to donations, July 2024. We have one donation for Riddle Elementary, $1,200 for one school, one book by the Optimist Club of Rochester. Wow, that is fantastic. Thank you so much for everyone involved in the Optimist group. That is, it's always humbling, but that is, that's fantastic. Any questions about the donations this month? I would make a comment on that. I'm in the Optimist Club, and I believe that that money actually came from Riddle, from Mona Zion. It was money that the kids raised, and we just funnel it through the Optimist Club, and it comes back to the school. Oh, wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. For the, uh, from the Bob Club, I believe. Okay. All right. Well, wonderful. Please tell the kids <laughs> that are active in that, thank you so much. That is, that's a lot of hard work. That's a lot of money. Thanks. Good for, for them. Thank you. Exactly. Okay, I will accept a motion for the approval of the donations. So moved. Moved by Ethan. Second. Second. By Mark. <laughs> All in favor? Motion passes 6 0. All right, moving on to personnel report. Personnel report for July 22nd, 2024, for recommendation. Under recommendations, we have Riddle Elementary. Summer intercession, we have Lisa Coulter, teacher, hourly rate 4613. Amy Freeman's teacher, hourly rate 4775. Heather Schaefer, instructional assistant, hourly rate 1668. CIA positions 2024, 2025, and 2025 to 2026. We have Alyssa Ramsey, stipend. All of these are stipends, $2,250. So we have Alyssa Ramsey, Jolene Rohr, 
Johanna Johnson and Elena Adams. Elena Adams. RMS, Jenny Bauman, internal transfer from fourth grade to fifth grade. RMS, special education teacher, salary will stay the same. Lindsay Pryor, sixth grade ELA teaching position at RMS. Annual salary, $54,650. Summer intercession, Emily Brown, teacher position, hourly rate, $36. CIA positions for 2024, 25, and 2025, 26. All of these positions are paid the stipend of $2,250. We have Rebecca Bollinger, fifth grade remediation teacher, Jenny Moore, sixth grade math teacher, Abby Hottershell, seventh grade science teacher, and Tristan Wilson, fifth through seventh elective teacher. That's kind of a tongue twister. All right, just the athletic recommendations. We have Daniel Bailey, RHS Girls Golf Assistant, stipend $1,170. Hannah Seward, RHS Cross Country Assistant Coach, stipend $1,170. Diego Ochoa. Ochoa. Ochoa, thank you. <laughs> RHS Cross Country Volunteer Assistant, volunteer. Amanda Bouldry, Color Guard Sponsor, stipend $900. <laughs> Eric Murphy, seventh grade Football Assistant Coach, stipend $2,100. Athletic resignations, Nate Basham from the following, RHS Assistant Coach Football, RHS Assistant Coach ba Girls Basketball, RMS Head Coach Track. Special Services, Hannah Moore, Developmental Preschool Teacher, Annual Salary, $44,300. Transportation Department, did I miss that? Transportation Department, Logan Young, bus driver for RCSC, pay based on route assigned. Mary Scott, special needs bus aid for RCSC, per day, $80. Darlena, Darlena, Darlena Klinger, uh, special needs bus aid for RCSC, per day, $80. Food service, Robin Gray, food service, Assistant sub of as of August 13th, 2024, hourly rate $13. Joshua Wean, transferring from Riddle to RMS Food Service Manager, hourly rate $16.38. Linda Turnipseed, transferring from RHS Assistant to Interim, hourly rate $14.77. Oh, I'm sorry, transferring from RHS Assistant to Interim Food Service Manager at Riddle. Uh, that was Linda Turnsey. Catherine Lindsay, transferring from Riddle to RMS Food Service Assistant. Pay will remain the same. Resignation, Judith Johnson, full-time bus aide. She will remain part-time subbing. <coughs> Hannah Smith, kindergarten instructional assistant at Columbia Elementary. Any questions on any of that? <clears throat> there, there were others that we'll be bringing to you at the um, regular meeting before the study session. There are still a few more hires that, that we're working on, and I know Jason turned in a couple of today in regards to some resignations, so we'll continue to keep you updated. Wait, how bad did you have to fight uh, Mr. Bernanke for his food service? <laughs> That is a very well loved employee. He is fantastic. They're all food service workers are fantastic, but he stands out when you go into Riddle. Oh, we're very excited. He is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> any questions on any of the personnel report? Happy to see everybody returning. <coughs> Questions from the public? No? I will accept a motion to approve the personnel report. So moved. Moved by Jenny. Second. Second by Ethan. All in favor? Personnel report approved 6 0. Mrs. Vance. So we can begin with the first of the principal's report. So, Mr. Haas, if you'd like to go first. Uh, July 29th and 30th, we will have technology pick up. Mr. Kistler's three years ready to go. That's big for it to be successful for the kids on day one. Um, so if you can get in there from nine to two, that'd be great to get that device. 
Um, we did start, uh, I call it band camp. I think they still call it band camp. They were out there marching without instruments today. They didn't seem to be enjoying that as much as they usually do. Uh, so maybe they'll add instruments tomorrow, but it was nice to see that. Uh, fall sports are starting to get in the full swing um, here at the end of the next week or two weeks from now. So, and the building's looking good. Uh, Don and her crew have done a great job. So uh, give them a pat on the back, Doug, if you would. And Doug's crew's getting everything looking good around the football field for August 16th will be our first extravaganza for that. Um, we're ready with academics. I think we're ready to roll. So questions? I have a, a couple people asked me this, and I honestly was like, I thought I was telling them the right thing, but I'm not sure. So with the eighth grade, I know they have a, they, can, they have the technology pick up from nine to two, a mm -hmm. time slot, but then they also have the open yeah. house they can pick up everything at the open house or do they have to come both times? No, they can get everything at the open house, but they can also get it earlier if they want. Okay. We don't differentiate with that, so. Okay. But that's yeah, we do right. have the open house. That's a lot for the parents more than the kids usually because they, the kids came over before school ended, right? Lucas and Cassie did a great job of letting us bring the homerooms over and we showed them everything. So now parents can come in and maybe kind of ease their minds as we transition over to the big building and get things rocking and rolling for them, so. Great. Yeah. Any questions for Mr. Ellis? Thank you. Thank yeah. you. So July 31st, we'll have Riddle to Middle, so that's for the incoming fifth grade kiddos. They will come and that is the most important time for them. We already did an open house back in May, but this will be where they come, go through, they're, they're being given a breakfast and a lunch this time, so thank you, Wendy. Um, they'll go through the breakfast line, see how that works, go through the lunch line, see, that, see how that works, go through their schedule, meet all their teachers, scenes in their classrooms, be able to get their lockers put together and practice that lock, so it's a good half day for them. Um, then in the afternoon of that day, sixth and seventh graders are invited in to come and do the same thing, pick up their iPads, get locks, get organized, and ready to go. Um, other than that, we're just, scheduling all these new enrollments we have. Woo -woo. I think I counted 20 so far, yeah, so that's good. Yes. Um, just getting everything ready, thanks to our crew for <coughs> getting everything shampooed and cleaned. We were walking around as we do like every week and just see the progress and it, it looks great. Teachers are doing a great job getting everything set up. Maintenance doing a great job making everything look good, smell good. So we're ready to go. <laughs> it's always a good sign. It's a thing. Yeah. At one point in June, I smelled a mouse. So uh, we got that taken care of. Stuart Little stuff. <laughs> Stuart Little. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know where. Maybe it's a picnic somewhere. <laughs> Um, we have open house on August 31st as well from 5.30 to 7. Um, I think our pictures are already scheduled for August 8th. And uh, so we're already talking beginning of the school. We'll do our beginning of the school year testing, the, not obviously the Friday, but the week after and the following week. Uh, some shout outs here. Thanks to Tech for all the installations. I don't know if we call them the new smart boards or if there's another name for them, but those are, those are pretty sweet. And uh, thanks to Jerry, Tanya, and Laura for getting our building. It's looking really awesome. And Mrs. Schaefer and Mrs. Kimmel are already getting all our tags ready for our kids to make sure we get them on the right bus. On the first <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's a big, big thing. So that's what we got going on. Any questions? Maybe it's not exactly appropriate for a roof, but it's a building. The roof all done? Yeah, it looks like everything's pulled good. away? Mm -hmm. Yep, we'll uh, have the final punch up on Friday. We're gonna have our meeting to finalize everything, but everything that's gone very smoothly as well. Still blue. Oh, well, they covered that up for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, we just finished up uh, last week for our summer reading program, and that was a very successful program. We had uh, very good attendance um, during those uh, month and a half that we had kids coming in. And um, really good program, a lot of things going on with the kids, um, and um, it, was, it was very well attended. So, um, you know, we really appreciate uh, all the help and the effort and stuff that went into uh, to that program. We just started our intercession program, and our intercession program is, um, we have Little and Columbia both um, over there, and we had a, about a little over 30 kids today. 
which was very good. Uh, it was really nice to be able to sit down in the in the lunchroom and have breakfast with those kids. They they're so excited to be back in the building and to just spend some time with them. It was a completely different feel uh, in our building today because uh, we got to spend some time with the kids. Summer reading, we get, got to do the same thing, but they were a little more spread out. So um, intercession is rolling, and that will uh, <coughs> conclude on Thursday, and uh, then we'll be ready to go. Uh, like all the other buildings, um, we've been getting ready for the start of school. Our maintenance team has done a fantastic job. Um, our, our building looks great. Uh, tech has been over there working hard with the uh, smart boards, getting those in, getting the old smart boards down. Uh, so we appreciate all the help that the tech and the maintenance department has done. Uh, our summer food program at, at Columbia has been very successful too. We even had some parents this morning show up and eat, eating with their kids. Um, so we appreciate all that. The food, the, the food service department has worked all summer to have those uh, opportunities for the kids and the parents to come in. And, um, and it's really been nice to, to just have them show up and, and go eat and, uh, and enjoy a good meal. So uh, a big thanks to them as well. Um, we've got our open house coming up on July 31st. And one of the things that um, is going to be a little bit different about our open house than has been in the past is we are um, creating, my, my teachers and Brenda McLean have really, um, we, we've talked about this for years on how we want to get uh, our parents kind of more involved. Um, not, not involved, I, I shouldn't say that because our parents are very involved. Um, we want to provide our parents uh, more resources, show them kind of what is available in our community what types of things um, are there for them to help them. A lot of our parents that at Columbia are coming in, this is maybe their first child, their first experience with school. They have a lot of questions and, and a lot of them have some needs. So um, we have organized uh, like a resource fair uh, for our open house and in our gym we're gonna set up tables. Right now we've got about eight to 10 organizations um, from within the community. I'll just read a few of them, Fort County, um, we're going to have uh, a representative from Matthews Market um, come in um, and uh, another representative to head up the clubs for boys and girls, community partners, Little Lambs, Fulton County Public Library. We're working on Fulton County Hope, Youth Outlet Center, um, Division of Family Resources, uh, both our local fire or police department and sheriff's department um, are going to be there. Uh, we're working on trying to get the fire department out to possibly bring um, uh, fire um, apparatus and you know, the, uh, the things of the extinguishers smoke alarms smoke alarms fire alarms, alarms. <laughs> <laughs> um, get there then. yeah 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 <laughs> you were almost there <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> you're right <laughs> you are right um, but, but the intent is just to have uh, an opportunity as parents are in our building to walk around uh, 529. Um, we're working on trying to get uh, them there as well. Um, but to have an opportunity to uh, meet some of the people in our community that have resources available that can help them in certain situations, things that we can't always help with, um, but they may need. And um, I, I've got to give uh, Brenda McLean all the credit for the legwork. She's been working on this this summer. We talked about it at the end of the year. Uh, on wanting to do it and um, and she's making it happen and uh, I, I'm really excited about all of them coming on our our first day um, so that the parents have that opportunity and we hope to build on that um, later in the year possibly having some more similar type things or even uh, you know some um, some sessions classes things like that that parents can come in if they want to learn about some of the community organizations and stuff that we have so we're working on that and uh, first days on Next Friday. I think that's it. Jason, would you please uh, share um, all the work that you've been into and the benefits that you're seeing in regards to On My Way Pre K and how that's working for you? Yeah. Um, yeah, On My Way Pre K. Okay, we've, you guys, you know, at the end of the year, we, we got our approval of On My Way Pre K. We got certified as On My Way Pre K. That's kind of only half of it because in order for it to really benefit, parents um, and in our community uh, that are utilizing our preschool um, it requires a lot of paperwork on their part uh, they have to submit a lot of documentation um, they have to be eligible for the benefits and uh, that's not an easy task because just giving it to a parent and asking them to fill it out 
um, is not easy because there's a lot of questions they have and things like that. So uh, last Friday we held um, a little um, open house invitation to all the parents that um, were interested in, uh, or, and possibly could be eligible for uh, the On My Way Pre-K funding. And um, we had a really good turnout. It was fantastic. The On My Way Pre-K rep came, our, our local rep, or not local, she, she's up north, I think almost in Michigan. But um, she came and, and helped out because when she sends emails, they don't know who Claudia is. And so we I wanted to put a face you know, to the name um, and build kind of that relationship. And we were able to get seven parents fully signed up um, with everything that we need. And we're, um, we're gonna, they'll, they'll all get approved. And then we've got about five more. And what that does um, is it'll pay for their preschool. Uh, the, the On My Way Pre-K will pay for their preschool so they don't have to pay for that uh, out of their pocket. Um, it pays us uh, more than, uh, we'll, we'll, we actually get more money um, through that than what we get when they get a local scholarship. Um, but the other thing that it does is those seven people would have gotten the local scholarship. So that will take a little bit of um, relief off of our local funds at the Community Foundation and they do a great job. They've been so supportive of our families, anybody that's applied that's eligible, they've taken good care of them. But that'll ease up a little bit of their pressure that they receive on that. Um, and that's kind of where we're at on the On My Way Pre-K uh, front right now. So we'll continue to work on trying to get parents uh, involved and signed up and uh, it's not uncommon. I mean, you don't, when you get On My Way Pre-K, you don't get all of your kids enrolled in it because they're not all eligible and there's a lot of things to it. So the fact that we've got seven, um, you know, right at the start of the year before we've even started is, is a really good start for us. So, so we'll receive funding for them. Thank you. And Stacia Conrad, by the way, is uh, been a very big help on the On My Way Pre-K. Um, she, she does a fantastic, she's our CIA coach for our pre-K and um, she does a great job with um, communicating with the On My Way Pre-K ladies and helping with the paperwork aspect of it because there's a lot to that. So um, she was very big in that day, our Friday day that we had everybody there and um, she helped, helped get that set up. So i to give her credit for, for that. That was really, really her doing. So. Um, uh, July 31st, we have instructional assistant training here um, at the Learning Center. Um, about 64-ish. Um, we'll get them, you know, through the, the training that has to go on and different people in the corporation that come and talk um, about, you know, time cards, the handbook, and all this and that. Um, so we'll get through that. Um, I, I do appreciate maintenance um, I know no one is really tethered to this building but it is very nice whenever um, they were able to come and you know each of the rooms in this building got shampooed last week and um, that was very much appreciated uh, all the buses are Cleaned and ready, thanks to Michelle Hager and her crew that helped me finish them up. They did a tremendous job of cleaning them. Uh, the routes will be ready Friday, <laughs> I'm hoping. <laughs> uh, I'm, yeah, it's a rough go with Kim being gone, but the girls are doing good. Emily and Heather now, they're doing good at getting them figured out. And three of us, we all get something done. But <laughs> But yeah, it's pretty. And uh, I don't know. we have our safety meeting tomorrow night here. The drivers from four to I've got four videos to watch. It's a fun time. But uh, uh, got that tomorrow night from here. And the drivers are. I got a full fleet of drivers this year. First time. In, long time so I could be an available sub <laughs> instead of robbing Peter to pay Paul some moving drivers around pulling teachers out of the school to run this and that so that'd be a good year and the drivers are ready and I'm ready to go so Any questions? Any questions? our um, summer feeding program will be ending this week 
the uh, Kiwana Library and get this right, middle will finish on Thursday and then the Fulton County Public Library, Columbia and the high school will finish on Friday. The direct certification has opened up and those are going to start being processed through um, free and reduced applications are coming in. Our annual, annual financial report is on hold because the state is having an issue with their website. So that could be a little bit later this year. We have our first audit August 7th. My child nutrition specialist will be in the administration building for that and it's supposed to be an all day event. It's over June's um, SSP numbers. So um, she'll mainly focus on the high school because they have the main spot that they satellite out of. All the managers are in some building, if not getting back into their building to get opened up and finishing any training that we need to have for the staff to start the school year. I want to start off by saying thank you to all you, all the buildings for knowledge in the maintenance department. I know it doesn't get said enough to them, but when we have our meeting this week, we'll, uh, I'll convey that to them. And I know it'll mean a lot to them. So they do bust their hump to get stuff done. And I've got a good versatile crew that's willing to go just about anywhere and help us out in the district. So um, this week we're gearing, down, gearing up for asphalt ceiling over at Riddle. Um, that'll happen starting Thursday. And you did say you wanted to talk to them, didn't you, Luke? Yeah, I reached out to them. Okay. Too. And then uh, other than that, we just on the big dash to get ready for school. Before we close, what, what people don't see is the, the large group meeting that we had, I think it was last week, where everybody in this room, including technology and Shauna and everybody were around one table. There were lots of um, communication, problem solving, helping each other, supporting each other, coming up with ideas. And at the same time, there was laughter and support. So what a, just a great team. And I think you saw some of that here, but just a lot of support and, and team dynamics that happens right here in this room. So thank you all for that. Um, I'm sure we'll be ready. I, I'm sure we'll be ready next week and uh, we'll be pushing out information to parents. We'll be talking about <laughs> <laughs> one thing. One thing that I do want to share is we work so hard collectively in this room to make sure that students are safe and those first few days transportation is going to run much slower. It's not indicative of the pickup times and drop offs that you're going to see throughout the year. But what it is trying to do is making sure that we get the right kids in the right places. Drivers know uh, their students' names. They know where they're being dropped off. They're making sure somebody's at home. That takes a lot of effort from each building right to transportation to the drivers to, to those that are dropping them off. So we ask the community to be patient. It usually takes about, Kevin, five or six days and we are locked in and we have things moving slowly or moving up. That's <laughs> what <laughs> moving up, moving smoothly, smoothly. smoothly. Uh, but it is going to be slow at first. So we do ask for your support. If you have questions, make sure that you reach out, but I uh, do want to share that out because that seems to be the largest hurdle the first few days of, of school. So, um, but thank you to each of you. We rallied a meeting late this afternoon. Everybody was so, um, receptive and willing to come in and support each other so thank you um, I don't think the public and sometimes even the board doesn't realize the dynamics in this room and it's greatly appreciated okay yeah any other board comments questions I have a question yeah I should have asked this I mean it's July and we don't really think about school starting next week but um, mm -hmm. Should have brought it up at our study session uh, two weeks ago, but do you know if um, the mayor has gotten anywhere with crossing guards? So he did share out that he is working with um, different resources. I forget what meeting I was in. Were you, were one of you looking at that meeting? He is working on 
Uh, I get confused where I've been. He, he was working on a crossing guard here and then one on Main Street. And um, he had a couple of ideas and leads in regards to who that person might be um, working uh, together with that. But he, he is dedicated to making sure that that happens. So he also putting up um, a lot of uh, signage, um, painting those paths, those types of things. So he, uh, we are constantly in communication. I know he had some ideas for some high school students. We've been relaying that to Oscar and his team and in that he has shared that he is dedicated to doing that. So, was it the Chamber of Commerce meeting? Now I know. <laughs> he was there and he shared that out, so. Super. Yep. Any other questions? Okay, far enough. You're welcome to stay, but this meeting is adjourned. <laughs>